Sweden now. Um, I'm obviously not Swedish, so I thought it would be fun to talk about a few of the odd things that they have here in comparison to England, where I come from. Um, and I guess reasons why I prefer living here than to in England, because I do get asked a lot, hey, don't you want to move back? Or do you ever think about going back? And quite frankly, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's all I will say on that, particularly. Um, okay, so when you come to Sweden, one of the first things you'll notice is that it is very, very clean. Oh my god, like it is beautiful. And <laughs> there aren't even that many like garbage bins around at all. It is exceptionally clean here. Um, you do see a lot of people like, like, what we have in England, like garbage guys or, you know, people who go around that work for the commune or like the region. Or I say the, the region, I mean like the town. I live in Eskastuna and it, Eskastuna commune is like what Eskastuna is in like the council and everything. That would have been easier to say. Um, and I just want to say actually, I'm explaining this as best to my experiences, don't take my word for it. Um, and if I get any information wrong, I'm really sorry. Uh, it Some stuff is very confusing to me, but I'm going to talk about what I know and what I understand. Anyway, so yeah, you, you see a lot of people cleaning up the streets of like Sweden, and it's just so clean. And I've been to other cities as well. Uh, and I've been to Malmö, which is in the south of Sweden. It's in a very, very big city. We've driven through Göteborg and, or Gothenburg. Um, and yeah, it's, it's the same everywhere. It's very, very clean, which is, which is really good, it's really good. Um, now, part of that reason, I guess, is because they recycle everything as well. And well, uh, Sweden is very, very big on protecting the country and the land and you know, they're very, very focused about it being a natural, natural land and preserving the forestry around here. You can't go anywhere without seeing some kind of forest or plantation everywhere. Like there are trees and plants everywhere. It's wonderful. It's great. You can walk five minutes and you'll be in a forest or you can walk through a very small little cluster of trees, I guess, and come out the other side and you know, it's it's nice. Uh, in terms of recycling in Sweden, um, <laughs> they actually have a shortage on recycle or like garbage. Sweden, uh, I read somewhere. Don't I don't know how recent or close this fact is, but apparently, one percent of garbage in Sweden goes into landfills. The rest is recycled. I assume. Um, and they actually import garbage from Norway and the UK and I think Italy as well, which is ridiculous. And I don't mean that in a, guys, what are you doing? Why even bother? I mean, that's so strange that Sweden is so focused on being this wonderful clean country and it's just, <laughs> it's great. I love it. It's wonderful. Um. So yeah, they import a lot of their garbage. I think most of it comes from Norway, which of course they recycle. I uh, when when you go shopping and say if you've got like a little can or you want to buy a can of coke or a bottle of drink, um, on the back they have this little symbol. I'm gonna show it here. It might be backwards because my camera. But basically, there's this little symbol, and on there it says "pant et kron et kr." which is one crown. 
Um, and basically, it's an incentive for people to recycle because when you go into somewhere like Ica or Coop, you have a little station where you've got these machines and you put in your can through the little hole and it recycles them, squishes them up, and you get money back for it. And that's what the, the pant is. You get one crown back. And it's a part of what, like, you pay for the drink. And if you recycle it, you will get one crown of that cost back. I, I felt like that took longer to explain <laughs> than it should have. Uh, and it, that's the same for everything. It's alcohol, all of it. It's, it's all, most of them all have these little pant thingies on. For more, like, international drinks, you don't find it. But, I mean, we generally only drink, uh, in terms of, like, soda and stuff, we drink, uh, this is Trocadero. Um, and it's backwards, I know, sorry. Uh, and that's, it's a really nice Swedish drink. Um, I don't know what's in it. It's, like, orange and apple flavoured something of niceness. It's really tasty. Try it if you get a chance. Uh, who is doing like coke and stuff? Then they all have the, the pant things on. Um, so yeah, that covers those. Recycling, we, where everyone lives, everyone has, it's called, I can't remember the word for it, I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, so it's a little shed, basically, outside. And you go in, you have your key, so the same one you use for your apartment, I guess. Um, you go in, you unlock the door, and in there is like lots and lots and lots and lots of big bins where you recycle everything, like paper, glass, red, bo red bottle, green bottles, brown bottles, whatever. And all of that is recycled, and they're very particular about making sure that people do it correctly. Uh, we had a few problems here outside our apartment where people were just leaving garbage in the room and it was disgusting. There was birds getting everywhere and it was horrible. In the summer it's even worse because if people don't make a mess we get wasps and they are evil. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean that pretty much covers recycling in Sweden. It's massive. It's Everyone does it. Um, uh, you pay for plastic bags here we, like you don't even get asked like I know they've initiated that in Sweden in England now like do you want to pay for your plastic bag and god damn it England get a grip okay we don't even get asked they just you just pay for it because you do and if you don't want to pay for it you recycle your bags and use them again it's the same thing it's an incentive to recycle and use plastic bags again uh, and all the bags do get recycled anyway so it doesn't even matter um, okay, I'm going to move on anyway. Um, I want to talk about alcohol, my favourite subject. Um, so alcohol in Sweden is sold in only one place. And I mean like a chain of stores around, I don't mean like one single store in Sweden. Um, it is called System Belaget, System Belaget. Um, anyway. The system is run by uh, the government, basically. And I'm going to read an excerpt from the website where they're explaining sort of what they do and because it, it, it will basically explain itself and, I, and then I'll give my... yeah. System Balaga exists for one reason, to minimise alcohol-related problems by selling alcohol in a responsible way without profit motive. So. First point right there, selling alcohol in a responsible way. It's true. I've spoken to people, I've gone out for a drink with people, and I have never once ever in my life seen Swedish people get rowdy or have fights or vomiting in the streets or pissing everywhere like the Brits do. Because let's be honest, guys, we are pretty nasty drinkers. Um, and I know that Sweden is very much like Germany in that respect. They drink in a very different way. Yeah, they'll have pre-drinks, they'll have some snacks with it, or they'll go out to dinner and drink. Um, so that's really good. It's really, really good. Uh, you know, you, you just don't get that same kind of rowdiness. People still have fun, but you just don't get it at all. It's very calm and very... It's a very nice atmosphere when people are drinking together. 
Um, so going back to the website, the first alcohol monopoly ever started in the mid-1800s in Sweden. It worked so well that the model was spread all over the country. In 1955, the local companies merged to form a single national system of a larger company, a concept that still works. So, yeah, um, that's basically it. it. You don't get, they don't do sales, you don't get discounts, nothing like that. It is very, very strict. Um, you have to be 21 to buy alcohol in Sweden as well, which is another good thing. Of course, of course young people get a hold of a drink and, you know, get drunk and stuff, but again, it's the same, you don't really have any big problems like what you do in England. Um, I don't know, it's, it's like, cause I've lived here so long now, so to me it's just normal, and then when I go to England and party with people and there are people falling over and I'm just like, what are you doing? get a grip of yourself. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, I'm trying to think if there was something else related to that, but I don't think, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, there is the, the whole thing that alcohol in Sweden costs a lot of money. Like, when you go out to a bar, uh, it, it's more expensive to go drinking in a pub rather than go to a system, buy some drinks, go home, and drink with friends. That's generally what people do. Uh, I go out very occasionally, so <laughs> that's about it. Uh, let's see. My next subject, because yeah, but <laughs> there's not much to it. It's yeah. I will post links below as well, so you can like check it out yourself. Um. So, Swedish society is always a fun one to talk about. Um. So Swedish people, I read another place as well, that Sweden's one of the happiest places ever to live. And yeah, I'm going to say it like this. When you catch a Swedish person, and I, I mean like Pokemon catch, you you got to leap in there and get them quick. Um, they're really nice. F Swedish people are the friendliest people I've ever experienced. They're very welcoming. Even if they don't like you, they're very, very welcoming. And, you know, very polite. And it, it's really nice. And the reason I say when you catch them is because Swedish people are also very private. So in England, if you're sitting on the bus and someone trips or something silly happens, someone will laugh, you'll have a conversation, you've made a friend for life. You can talk to anyone in England, literally. I have I've even given advice to a woman on a train about her drug addict son. So... You know, and, and I met another woman and her son who had been around seeing the sights, and she was really lovely. She was so nice. They were telling me about their day, and I, I'd been working, and I was on my way home. So, yeah, no, that was that was really cool. You can talk to anyone in Sweden. Uh, in England, sorry. In Sweden, I'm going to say, as my friend put it once, he was he said to me, if, I, if you came on a bus and smiled at me, I would think you are a murderer. And it's true. Um... Uh, <laughs> The social norm is that you don't really talk to people. You don't. You don't want to bother other people. You know. You don't want to impress on that. Or like, just you just leave leave each other alone. You know. Um, I have been known to break the social norms. I once went up to a girl and told her how much I loved her coat, and it was adorable. It was a cute little red dress coat with black spots on it and a little hood. It was oh, it was divine. Uh, and I, I said to her, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now because this is weird. Um, so yeah, and you know, I, I live in Sweden, so I do behave as is expected of me. I'm the world's best immigrant. I try to look for work. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I do. I, I, I try to behave as what is expected of me in Swedish society. Um, and you do, after a while, find yourself just doing it naturally. Like, if I tend not to sit... <laughs> yeah, the buses. I, I tend not to sit near people on the bus. If there is a bus and it is kind of full of people and there's an empty seat next to you and there are people standing up, 
If you're sitting there, a Swedish person will not sit next to you. Even if there's, like, the bus is full, they're old, they won't. Actually, old people are okay. They're a little bit more um, relaxed about the whole thing. I've had a lot of conversations with old Swedish people. Um, if, <laughs> yeah, they, they won't sit next to you because you could kill them or rape them or fuck you up, basically. Watch out for that scary person on the bus. There's no space here. I'm feeling a little bit tired, but I'm not going to sit next to you. <laughs> no. Um, and again, I want to, if this offends anyone, I'm really sorry. I'm literally just calling it as I see it. I love Sweden. Please don't berate me. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, when friends go out to dinner, it's usually, usually there's one person who's like, ah, I'll, I'll pick up the bill this time. Like, in a normal situation. In Sweden, people tend to uh, split the bill, actually. It's very uncommon for someone to be like, let me, let me buy you dinner. Or, I guess unless you're on a date or something, I'm not sure. I've never been on a date in Sweden. Um, <laughs> so, I can't comment on that. Oh, but actually I can talk about a little bit again with the theme of society Swedish people do not as far as I'm aware go out and meet people in the bar like tinder arrived and you guys are obsessed literally obsessed I've got a friend she only uses tinder to find people and it's madness absolute madness guys stop go out and talk to each other break those social norms please tinder is a terrible place it's only there for people like me to laugh at it. Because it is terrible. <laughs> I hate Tinder so much. People are so awful on there. Ugh. I, I have another female friend who posts some of the weird stuff she comes across on Tinder. And I, I'm pretty sure Tinder is only there for entertainment. I am pretty damn sure. But that covers socialness, society, sociology how people are in Sweden. Um, to sum up, I'm going to go for the winter in Sweden. Um, so, if you live in the north, you it's very strict. You, you literally have twelve month, uh, sorry, six months of wind, sun and six months of darkness. Um, it's very, very dark here. It started getting light again. Uh, I mean, it's... <laughs> it's... Uh, what's the time? It's about four o'clock, almost. Um, if this was maybe a month ago, two months ago, it would be pitch black outside. Absolutely pitch black. It's very bright out there now. It's very grey and rainy, but it, uh, it's, it's light, you know. Um, so, I mean, a month ago, at half past two in the afternoon, it would be getting really dark real quick. Uh, and there is a thing in Sweden, it's, it's a real thing actually, which surprised me because it sounds very silly. Uh, it's called Seasonal Affective Disorder, which it basically means that people who can or do suffer with winter depression. And it has everything to do with the vitamin D and I guess just being out in the sun, you know? Um, there's a woman here who, she grew up in, it says Liverpool in England, uh, and she's talking about this uh, disease, she calls it here. Um, I will post a link to this because it is really interesting, and if you're very sceptical about depression and things like that, then I highly recommend that you read it because it's, it's a real thing and it's so interesting. Uh, and I can confirm that I am... I do not like the way I get so depressed in the winter and when the sun comes out I am like a cat on catnip times a hundred. Yeah. Seriously. Uh no, it's 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 really weird, like 'cause it's just you dark all the, it's dark all the time and uh, it's really weird and my for me personally my, my sleeping pattern goes way out the window. I can be up until like I have been up until like five AM and be like Oh, it's 5am? Shit. Probably should sleep. And then I sleep and 
it'll be like two o'clock and it's dark again and you're like wow uh, I did that once I fell as I slept I had a really good night's sleep and I, I slept all day as well uh, and I woke up at two o'clock and it was oh, it must have been like two or three uh, and, I, and it was completely dark out and I just f fucked me right up it was weird um, so um, excuse me there are ways to combat winter depression is a lot of places recommend that you go out and take a walk in the middle like not in the middle of the day because then it starts getting dark again but like 11 12 ish maybe that is the middle of the day shut up you're an idiot go out and take a walk when the sun is up and it is bright out so you can get as much sunshine as you can and get all those nice radioactive sun rays into your skin because you need it basically you you really need it um it's very it's a really good idea i always like to go to a coffee shop like about 11 10 or 11 ish when it's just starting to get bright like in the beginning of the morning and it's really nice because you can go in and have a cup of coffee and and uh, yeah it's good on the subject of coffee I forgot something that is very important in Sweden so important it's the most common thing I've ever it's and it's it's weird so when if you want to go out with your friends in England you'll be like you want to go for a coffee, you want to go for a drink, it's fine. And you can do that here too. You can say to someone, do you want to go get a cup of tea? Um, or do you want to go get some coffee? You know, and that's fine. People do that here. People also go out for fika, which specifically is going out or, or someone having fika at your house drinking coffee and eating like uh, cinnamon buns I had to translate in my head the word cinnamon buns or we have a wiener bread really good they're my favourites love them uh, oh yeah canil bullar that's like cinnamon roll bun things that's fika, eating coffee and those, and it's really specific, and Swedish people do that all the time. Uh, but they also go out for coffee. It's two different things, completely. Uh, and I want to mention, like, the weirdest word that took me the longest time to understand the concept of. And I'm going to, I might insert, like, Swedish laughter right here. Lagom. Um, it's... It's like not too much and not too little, and they have like this this word for it, lagom. And it's if you say that to someone, they like if you're if they're pouring you coffee, and you they they'll ask how much you say lagom, they'll know exactly how much that is. What if my lagom is like this much? And I've asked this question, and they're like, but it's not because that's that's not lagom. I don't know. But that is all my subjects covered for this video. Um, I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that I have not bored, like, bored the fuck out of you. I hope that you subscribe because that would be awesome. I'd like some more subscribers so I don't feel like an idiot. <laughs> uh, but yeah I I'm definitely gonna do some more videos relating to Sweden and the like transitions from England to Sweden because I think it's an interesting subject you know um so this was the first all right peace out guys